Hey, welcome back to Jay Esri Farms on YouTube. I uh, appreciate you uh, stopping by. Uh, today, we are working on another Honda pump engine. You know, my last video where we uh, fixed one, I didn't show enough of all the ins and outs and what I, exactly I did. Uh, on social media, I had a lot of people ask me, said, man, how did you do that? What did you do? Uh, you know, how, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I didn't show enough of every little step that we did. So today we're gonna do that. Uh, today I've got this, uh, don't know if it runs or not. Uh, they said it did last season. Uh, it come to me, another one of these little motors come to me with the carburetor off, uh, said it didn't run, uh, it needs a new carburetor, whatever they said, they said it just won't run, and so I said, like, okay, and they said, we're going to throw them away, he, you know, he, he manages a big company, they said they throw them away and they're going to buy a brand new one, so they bought brand new ones, and they're like, these are just junk, we're going to throw them away, do you want them? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I, sure, I want them, I don't need the pump per se, but... I love getting things to work. I love uh, bringing things back to life. And I can always use another little old motor on something uh, around here on the farm. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're actually, today we're actually gonna take the pump off too of this one. I've already got a pump for my sprayer uh, in my nurse trailer. And then I've got this spare that we worked on yesterday that is working perfect. So uh, this one here, I'm just gonna take off so I can use the motor. Uh, and I'll probably put it on a wire roller or, or you know, there's no telling where I'll, I'll put it. But anyway, so today's episode, we're going to have some time lapse of, uh, me working on this little motor and I'll, I'll stop it every now and then and I will show you what I'm doing each step. That way you can kind of know if you've got one of these little Honda, Honda engines, they're excellent engines. If you got one that won't start, that, uh, just you're having trouble with running rough, you know, it gets hot and shuts off or uh you know something like that it's more than likely several little old points that we're going to be touching today so you might want to check that out and for 34 dollars maybe shipping maybe a little more than that but for 34 dollars you can buy everything that i'm going to put on this brand new uh on amazon i'll link it in the description below and you could have you know you can bring back to life your little motor whatever it's on air compressor uh you know whatever so log splitter it was whatever but anyway so here you go and we're gonna we're gonna see if this little motor runs it may not but we're gonna see we're gonna take a chance that it, it, it will so here you go okay so here is the little motor um i don't know why both of them had long tails on their on their pull start clutches we'll fix that today too uh like i said the the carburetor come uh completely off the the motor when i got it i put all this on there to keep all the dirt out uh that i could i mean it come with all these wires pulled off um it's dripping gas here in my shop as we speak so it, it comes just like we we're showing it here so so you can see there the, the spark plug wire was off and who knows what they were trying to diagnose but we'll we'll figure it out here is my parts that I'll be putting on today. Of course, no, it's not a three-cylinder motor, but this is what you get in this kit. One kit comes with two spark plug wires, or uh, spark plugs, and the coil. The other one comes with the carburetor uh, spark plug. This uh, oil safety switch, whatever it is. Uh, the ignition switch, three, uh, three of the gaskets. This little block here that goes behind the carburetor, uh, a tank screen, uh, a fuel line, and here's the choke lever for the, the deal. And it also comes with an air cleaner. So here's the coil and, of course, the two spark plugs. Tools-wise, we are using my metric set of a uh, quarter inch, my John Deere. I don't have to be John Deere, but... John, it's my uh, quarter inch 
uh, ratchet set. Comes with the ratchet and all my sockets, deep wells, and light and extension. Uh, you know, my 10 millimeters missing there because I got it on this. I've got this uh, Milwaukee uh, cordless a quarter inch ratchet. My 3 8 ratchet with a uh, 13 16 for the uh, spark plug. Uh, some, uh, you know, just some pliers. This is the, all the sandpaper I have. It's on one of these wheels, so I use it. Just, just to kind of rough up the, the flywheel a bit. Here's a, a, a couple of straight bit screwdrivers, some brushes, uh, a magnet tray. Here's a wood chisel that I use for a scraper. So you were not very high tech here on our farm. So we kind of get use what we what we have. Anyway, that's that's what it that's what we got, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, as you can see, it's all crusty and uh, rusty here this was a fertilizer uh transfer pump so it you know it had a lot of rust in it i'm sure uh you know it made things rusty i'll brush that up and make sure that's all uh nice and clean that might have been some of the problems uh hadn't really found out much wrong with it yet but you can see how cruddy it is uh, there ain't no telling what i'm gonna find in there and uh so far the coal looks good of course it'll get replaced and then I'm gonna take the carburetor here off. You can see I took the two bolts out and I'm gonna pull the air scoop off and set it aside. And then there goes the carburetor. And the carburetor had these two linkages here, the spring and the uh, the linkage here for the throttle. And I've took it, taken it off. There's the old carburetor. We'll put it aside with the other one and then there you have it so now we're going to go after the coil so I'm going to go ahead and pull this wire it's got a catchy little wire thing here that or a tin thing that that holds the wire in place got to pop it through and you got to unwind it around all this garbage No, the, the coal wire feels like it's good. It hadn't been rubbing. They can run without that, without this wire. They just won't kill. You could have a bad coal wire, and uh, or a, a bad wire here, and it, it, it'd still run. It just wouldn't wouldn't kill if it wasn't short now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that was working or not, but it gets a new one regardless. Looks a lot better than the other one though. Take these bolts out and we're gonna lay that aside. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be blowing this off, and so make sure you stuff a uh, rag or you put some tape or something over this to make sure it doesn't get any uh, dirt in the engine. So you, that's a, that's a must. So we're gonna we're gonna stop this up, and we're gonna blow this off with air, and then we're gonna we're going to uh, uh, brush it up, and uh, then then we're going to uh, uh, to put it. Put some uh, parts brake cleaner on it. Then we're gonna blow it off again, and then then we'll then we'll then we'll go back to an assembly. Right now, tear down. Other than this little bitty uh, hood is there. Other than that, we're all done with tear down. So it's it's all tore down. Other than spark plug, than what I do to it. So we'll see 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 what happens after we get it clean. You know, we'll we'll. It'll be nice and new. Okay, so. I uh, found a piece of emery cloth and uh, I didn't know I had it. I, I forgot about having it. And I cleaned up the flywheel best I could. You know, being around a fertilizer all the time, uh, this thing rusted pretty good. So uh, that might've been some of the downfall of it. But anyway, I cleaned up the, uh, 
the, the flop wheel. And now that uh, uh, the coil will have a good place to contact now and it, uh, it probably will run a lot better doing that. So we'll, now we, we pretty well got it all clean now. Uh, you can see my rag, I'll pull it out now. Uh, now it's just going back with it. We're gonna start with a coil and uh, we're gonna put that on and uh, route that around and we're gonna adjust that. I'll show you how I do that. And then we'll, uh, we'll go to the next okay, step. Okay, the coil is installed, but it's still loose as a goose. I'll show you how I adjust the clearance on that. Um, you see here, the spark plug wire goes around there and the uh, ignition wire goes the other way. What I usually do is, I'll put a cardboard box under it. Let me uh, position that with two hands and then I'll, I'll be right back. All right, and as you see here, I got my, my cardboard box there and I've got this pushed in. Uh, is you know, it's you know, pushed in pretty, pretty snug. Then I'll tighten these two bolts here. Then I'll pull my cardboard box out and then it's set to that thickness of the cardboard, which is, is good enough. All right, and with those tight, I will pull that out. And there you go. That's one coil adjusted. And tight. So now I will reroute the ignition wire here. It goes around in here and goes wraps around these wires. These little holders there. You can see there. Get this figured out and then that little hard to uh, wire in deal must have broke off but it used to be right on there somewhere no worries now it'll go here for our ignition so there that step's done now now let's go ahead and put in the spark plug 13 16 socket fits that A lot of times it's the plug. Them plugs go out all the time. They get hot and then they mess up. Let's see what this one even looks like. He looks pretty clean, but he gets a new one because we got so many new ones. So uh, we'll adjust that to uh, 0 0.028 to 0 0.031. Three one, I believe, is the uh, 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 adjustment on that, and I will uh, show you how we do that. Right, we got ourselves a spark plug here, and I went by my local O'Reilly's place, and I got on my keychain a feeler gauge uh, in inches, and uh, I will slot this over to right there on the zero point three zero. Needs to be 0 0.028 to 31. So just right around that 30. And uh, that's all I'll do. And there's my measurement there. You can see there that I'm just a little over three, but that's where I mean, you can just wiggle it if it's smaller. If it's uh, too, you know, if your gap's too big, you can kind of lightly tap that. I mean, just barely tap the end of that down on the flywheel there. And you can make that a little bit smaller. And I mean, you just barely got to touch it. And uh, it'll make it a little, a little smaller. But you can see that feeler gauge, it gets bigger as it goes over here. And that feeler gauge is right there at 0 0.031. So really 3.2. I might need to make it go down just a little bit. Let me, let me go ahead and do that. There I am. I don't know if you can see it. 0 0.03 exactly. So, so we're gonna call that call that good. And put the spark plug back in the spark plug hole. Trying to do this one-handed here. A little 
little a little snugness. That'll work. We're gonna go ahead and put that until it snaps. And that'll work. Next is carburetor. You gotta figure out which, which gasket goes next. And looking at all of them, I decided this one here was the best fit of the lot for the carburetor. So uh, put that on and now we'll put the carburetor on. It goes on this way. And there we go. And we're gonna put that up there like that. And that's how that goes. Right there. Uh, next we will, uh, I'm gonna put the choke lever on. And then we're gonna put the, see these springs here. Pull this out just a little bit. This lever here on the off the throttle. Go ahead and pull this out just a little. It goes up here. Sorry, I had to have two hands. Anyway, this one here goes in that little hole and it goes down in that. There's the throttle and the little spring hooks on there. So we'll push that in. All right, next is the uh, gas tank. We're gonna get the gas tank uh, emptied. Uh, it, it still has some gas in it and we're gonna change the little uh, screen in that. All right, with the tank upside down, we put a socket wrench on the uh, uh, strainer here and we are taking this off. Probably wouldn't have to do this, but it come with it. And then as it come with it, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of it. And while we, while we got the tank off, we're going to change it. You can see the little, it's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But the new one's fine too. So we'll put that dude in there. And then it come with a brand new gas line. We'll put that on. Got that started, now we'll tighten that and we'll put the new gas line on and we'll go from there. All right, and as you can see here, we got the fuel line on. It comes out and around. Uh, I've got this shuck over the line. I've got the tank on, I don't have it tight. But you can see the, the fuel line is on. Spring and throttle. You can see that there's the little pickcock. You could change that, I guess, under there like it is there, but it's it's real easy to take the tank off. They've got that that bolt there and those two back here, so it ain't too bad. But it's starting to look like a motor again. We'll uh, button some stuff up on the tank. Uh, we'll button up the air scoop. Uh, and then we will uh, put on the, the shield and, and get some wiring done. So, so we'll, we'll be doing that next. Well, there we have it. Uh, we got the air scoop on, the carburetor in. I had to take the carburetor back off. I put the wrong gasket on. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I had to take it back off and uh, uh, change it and uh, figure out which one went where, who went where and put it back on. But anyway, that's got the air scoop on. Uh, of course, you can see the, the carburetor there is on, uh, the, the, the spark plug, the, uh, the fuel tank's on, the, the fuel ta uh, tank screen, and the, uh, the coil is all on. So all we like for starting it now is, of course, got to hook up the ignition. Uh, I went ahead and put on the uh, little, little relay or whatever it is over here. I've got to hook up some uh, lines here and uh, then just work on the cover. And uh, I got to change that switch out in the cover and put it on and uh, away we go.
Okay, we got it done. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. Problem. Looky there. Rocker arm fell off. It's a little push rod tube. Here's a rocker arm. <laughs> it won't run without that. <laughs> so we're gonna have to fix that. I don't know how come it come off, but it did. We'll put it back on and see what happens. Well, I went to start it and it just felt like it didn't have no compression and uh, it was not firing. It would backfire every now and then. I did know, not know why. When I opened this up, this was like that. This is a push rod. It goes off your lifter, off your camshaft. Okay, it, it pushes and cycles these valves. Well, both of them, look at them. Both of them are, you know, are able to move. You ain't supposed to do that. You ain't supposed to be able to do that. Uh, you know, yeah, they're supposed to be pretty, pretty, pretty tight right here. So. Something majorly went wrong right here. I don't know what it was. Uh, broken camshaft, wore out camshaft, uh, broke lifters. I, I I don't know what it is, but uh, this here's an, a fail here on this one. So we'll see what I can do. Right, what I found out was this valve right here was hung up. It is. It's got a stuck, broke, bent something valve in it. So this engine shot. Uh, it ain't even worth working on. So I still got my carburetor and all <laughs> in case I need it one of these days. So I'll probably pull it all off but or just leave this thing in here. But yeah, the the valves here are, are all, all stuck on it. So we got some major, major issues with this one. So that'll work. That sums it up.